Hey everybody, today I want to show you how to solve trig equations by graphing. The basic idea is pretty simple. Um, if you have an equation that you want to solve, like this guy, uh, start by graphing y equals the left hand side and y equals the right hand side. Once you've got those graphs, they're probably going to be two different curves that intersect in various places. Uh, find those intersections, specifically find the x-coordinate of those intersections. And uh, finally, you've got all your answers. You probably need to uh, write them as a couple of numbers plus full rotations to be able to describe all of the answers, um, usually like adding plus 360k or plus 2 pi k or something like that to the end. Now, you're probably not going to do this by hand. I mean, you could graph 3 sine of x minus 1 by hand. It's uh, centered around one, it goes up three and down three and so forth, but you're not going to be accurate enough by hand to really get the answers. So you're going to need to use some sort of a tool. I'm going to show you today how to use Desmos and also how to use a graphing calculator. They're both cool. Desmos is easier, um, but it's not always allowed on quizzes and tests and things like that. So here's Desmos. Um, we'll type in the left hand side, which was, if I remember right, uh, three sine of x uh, minus one, and we'll graph the right hand side, which is two cosine of x plus one. And uh, already I see some curves, I see they're intersecting in various places. Before I start looking carefully at those intersections, I want to think about what sort of settings the calculator is in right now and what sort of way I want to describe my answer. We often uh, write our answers in degrees, and so if we want to do that, we need to make sure the calculator's graphing in degree mode. If you click the wrench, uh, by default, Desmos does things in radians, and so if you want to go to degrees, simply click degrees. You will see that that definitely changed our graph because in the first 5, 10, 15 degrees, uh, the graph hasn't moved much. It hasn't had time to rotate around and, and go anywhere close to a full cycle. And so what you ought to do is either hold shift and drag the x-axis, okay, grab the x-axis while holding shift, and you can drag it like this, or a faster, better, more precise way, I suppose, is to hit the wrench, and where it says x-axis down here, simply type in what numbers you want. Uh, I would suggest going at least from zero uh, past a full rotation probably past a second rotation, so at least from 0 to 720. And then for a step value, um, it defaulted by 100s, and I think it actually makes more sense to go by 90s, because that's one quadrant, one fourth of a cycle usually. So now I can see a picture, and uh, to find the intersections in Desmos is easy. You just click on the intersection, right? There's one, there's one, here's an intersection, here's one. Desmos is also trying to highlight some of these highest and lowest points. We don't care about those for this problem. So the x-coordinate of this first intersection here was 67. The x-coordinate of the second intersection was 180. This next intersection is 427, and this one is 540. And what I want you to notice is that this, these intersections, uh, you know, and there's this little, I don't know, shape here in the middle. Um, that looks a lot like this one over here. In fact, uh, these are periodic. The, the pattern repeats itself over and over again. So this pair of solutions, you're going to find in another pair of solutions, one full cycle, which looks like 360 degrees in this case, uh, down the line. Um, it's not always 360 degrees. If you have more complicated graphs, sometimes it's maybe 180 or uh, maybe stretched even longer. But uh, there's always some sort of a period, um, and it's usually 360. So anyway, now that I've got uh, 67 and 180, it's time to uh, write down our answers. So here's our picture. Our answer is x could be 67 or 180, and then we can add 360s to it. Technically, you could subtract 360s too, so it wouldn't hurt to write plus or minus there. But that's um, that's solving by graphing. Uh, pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Um, sometimes you have to do things in radians instead of degrees. Um, not a hard fix. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. We're still going to graph things the same way. Um, we'll just go to the wrench and choose radians, or it was already there. Um, 
And then for our x-axis, instead of going from 0 to 720, which is um, two full degree rotations, uh, I might go from 0 uh, 2 pi is one rotation. And so 2 doubled would be 4 pi might be a good uh, graph to go on. And for a step size, um, I would suggest that you, instead of having it just choose something, uh, type in pi, uh, probably over 2. Pi halves, remember, is one quarter of a cycle. It's the 90 degrees for radians. And um, so now I've got, to, again, similar looking sort of picture, just scaled down to be in radians. And once again, I can find an intersection here and here and another one here and here. And it looks like 1.176 and pi are our intersections. And those happen again down the line. In this case, because it's one full rotation in radians, um, instead of adding 360, we would add 2 pi. And so final answer for this one would be this. 1.176 is this intersection. Um, and pi is this intersection down here, plus 2 pi k. All right, um, let's see this uh, if you have to use a calculator, because if you have a quiz or test or something, maybe Desmos is not an allowed option, but your calculator is. And so to do that, um, I will bring along a expert on calculators. So take it over, Mr. Rohr. So if you want to use your calculator to solve an equation by graphing, what you'll need to do is go to the y equals screen and type in your two equations. And uh, this example, we have 3 sine of x uh, minus 1. And then the right-hand side of the equation was 2 cosine of x plus 1. And um, a couple of settings that we might want to make sure that we have the same. Uh, if you press mode, uh, most importantly, this being a trig question, we need to think about whether we want uh, to graph things thinking in terms of the angle being degrees or radians. Uh, I'm going to do this example in degrees. Um, and uh, the rest of those settings probably don't matter for what we're doing today. If we press window, um, we definitely need to adjust our window so that we can see um, the right thing. The x number, that's measuring angle, we want to make sure that that has at least one full rotation, uh, probably two or more rotations. And so I'm going to suggest starting at zero and going to um, 360 doubled would be 720. And for an x scale, uh, I'm going to go by 90s, simply because that's uh, one quadrant each, right? And then the y values, um, those are measured uh, a lot smaller numbers. I would suggest maybe negative 5 to 5. And uh, we can look at this later and see if uh, that's going to work for us or not. Um, now if I press graph, here is the first curve. This is the 3 sine of x minus 1. And uh, here's the second curve. And the thing that I'm looking for are the intersections. Looks like our heights were uh, good. I can see both graphs, uh, so I don't need to adjust the y values anymore. Uh, looks like there's an intersection here and here, and then another one here and here. And uh, what I need you to remember is, you know, the, the period, um, the distance between these intersections and these intersections, uh, that's the part that we add to our solutions at the end. In this case, that looks like um, one full rotation, so 360 degrees separate that intersection from that one. To find those intersections, um, if you just need a really rough estimate, you can hit trace and you can use your arrow keys and get pretty close to it and you care about the x axis, the x numbers. So this looks like it might be 180 and if I go back a little bit, this looks like it's close to 60-ish, maybe exactly 60. If you want uh, more precision than that, you'll need to use the calculator's um, built-in intersection tools. And so that's in the calc menu. You hit second trace to get into the calculate menu and go down to intersect. And then it'll ask you a couple of questions. It'll say first curve, second curve, and guess. So when it says first curve, um, you're probably already beyond Y1, just hit enter. When it says second curve, it'll probably already bounce you to Y2, just hit enter. And then when it says guess, uh, now you've got to move your cursor close to an intersection because there are four different intersections on this graph and the calculator has no idea which one you want. 
So if you get close to this one and hit enter, then um, it starts spiraling around a little bit and it says that this intersection is about 67.4 degrees perhaps. Um, so anyway, write that one down. To find this intersection, um, hit second calc, go down to intersection. And uh, again, hit enter for first curve, enter for second curve, and either use your arrow keys to move close to that, or you can type a number. I said it was close to 180, right? So let me type that. Turns out it was actually exactly 180. And so that's, uh, that's kind of cool. Anyway, these graphs over here, um, I'm guessing they're 360 degrees later. Um, but uh, just to make sure, let me um, take 360 plus 180. That's, uh, well, while I'm tracing, I can actually type it. 180 plus 360. I think it's 540. Yep, and it bounced me right onto an intersection there. Um, and I bet if I took 67 and added 360 to it, I'll be right on an intersection. Yep, that one right there. And so the final answers would then be the 67 and the 180 that we found plus 360K. All right, so that's how you can solve some trig equations by graphing. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, shoot me an email or something like that, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.